Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Brar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Brar. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited's Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. Tarun Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Suresh Taneja, Group CFO, Mr. Samir Sinha, CEO Sugar Business Group, as well as other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was sent to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following an interactive question and answer session. I will now request Mr. Tarun Soni to open the call. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Richard. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q3 nine-month fiscal 23 earnings conference call for Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited. The overall performance for the company for the nine months ended December 31st, 2022, has definitely been satisfactory. The key highlights, uh, I'd like to discuss that before we get into uh, the business-wise business -wise detail, um, are the following. The sugarcane crushed for quarter three fiscal 23 is 3.12 million tons, which is an increase of 25.3% over the corresponding period of the previous year. And this is a, a result of the capex that was spent on modernization and de-bottlenecking at three of the factories of the group. The net recovery stood at 9.38% after the diversion of B heavy molasses with 92% crush with B heavy molasses during the quarter. The lower recoveries, which I will discuss later, are mainly due to the heavy late rains. We are expecting to narrow this gap in the balance part of the season, as our sampling data suggests that the plant cane, which will start coming to the factories in the next couple of weeks, is showing great promise. The company has achieved sugar exports of 135,000 tons, which includes the sale of quota of 73,000 tons during Q3 fiscal 23. And this is, of course, out of a total quota of approximately 205,000 tons. All of this has been achieved at remunerative prices. The increase in net distillery turnover by 61% in the nine months has been driven by additional capacity for commission during the course of the year. And this leads to sales volume increase of just under 40%, coupled with a 8% approximate improvement in realizations. So there's been a robust increase in the turnover of both the power transmission and water business, growing by 29% and 41% approximately year on year for the nine months. The outstanding order book for our engineering business stood at 1,766 crores. Yesterday, the board of directors at our board meeting approved a capex of 90 crores for the sugar business and 100 crores for the power transmission business. The proposed capex of 90 crores towards uh, our sugar business is for a process change at Milak Narayanpur towards refined sugar and modernization, demottlenecking, and most importantly, efficiency improvements at a various sugar units, which will lead to substantial cost optimization and a reduction in our cost of production. The proposed capex of 100 crores 
in our power transmission business is towards a brand new bay that will be set up with complete equipment for a new gear shaft. Uh, this will be at our existing facility at Metagali in Mysore. And it will also include machinery towards our defense business uh, project and plant, which is a separate facility that will be set up over the next 12 months as well. For the power transmission business, this will lead to an enhancement in terms of total capacity from a base of approximately 450 crores to 400 crores. I'd like to also spend a few minutes discussing the financial highlights for the nine months of fiscal 23. The profit before tax, before exceptional items, increased by 7.4% in the, in the quarter. The profitability in the sugar business is lower as the cost of sugar sold pertaining to the previous season includes the impact of sugarcane price, which was increased for uh, uh, sugar season 21-22 and led to a higher cost of production when compared to the previous corresponding quarter. Uh, further, is for the nine months of fiscal 22, this, these numbers also include an export subsidy of 57 crores related to the previous period. The higher profitability of the engineering business is due to strong revenue growth of 45.8% of and 35.8% during the current quarter and nine months period compared to the previous corresponding periods. The total debt of the company stood at 389 crores on a standalone basis versus 525 crores on the 31st of December 21. The standalone debt comprises of term loans of 335 odd crores. Almost all these loans uh, again are with interest subvention or at subsidized rates of interest. On a consolidated basis, the total debt is 480 crores compared to 592 crores for the previous period. The average cost of funds on the 31st of December stood at 4.75% versus 4.15% in the corresponding period of the previous year. The company at this point in time is holding surplus funds through short-term fixed deposits of 1,278 crores. Our proposed buyback of 800 crores is presently under approvals. The stake sale in Srivani Turbine Limited has infused substantial funds in the company, which even after the proposed buyback will meet the expansion requirements of the businesses and reduce finance costs or working capital requirements. I'd like to give a brief update on the buyback, the company has obtained approvals from shareholders. The draft letter of offer has been filed with SEBI and final, or the final observation letter is awaited. Turning towards the, uh, <clears throat> the, the financial highlights, again, I'd like to point out that for the quarter, the revenues from operations of the company grew by 34% to 1,658 or 59 crores and the EBITDA margin stood at 16% at 230 crores, and the PAT was a shade above 147 crores. I'd like to now spend a few minutes discussing the various businesses in a little more detail. Starting with the sugar business, our realizations during the quarter were 3611, or 3611 rupees per quintal for domestic sales, and our export realization was a considerable premium at 40, 41 rupees per quintal, 4,041 rupees per quintal for the same period. The current sugar prices, as of the 24th of January at our factories, for refined sugar, it's approximately 35.60 per quintal, and for sulfitation, it's about 34.50 per quintal. The sugar inventory on the 31st of December was just under 24 lakh quintals, valued at 34.4 rupees per kilo. Co-generation operations have achieved external sales of 36.5 crores for the nine months against 33 crores, an increase of 10%. I'd like to mention that our domestic realization price for this quarter is, uh, as I mentioned, 36.11, which is a 1% reduction 
versus the corresponding period of the previous year. Now, this, to me, frankly speaking, seems uh, a little bit of an anomaly because if we look at the stock position, especially on a month-on-month -month basis, uh, to have prices uh, at the same level uh, and marginally lower than the previous corresponding period is a little bit of an anomaly. Frankly speaking, the expectation uh, for the remainder of this year is that prices will gradually increase um, to a more healthier level. Uh, the, from an industry perspective, the country, as of the 15th of January, has produced 15.68 million tons, which is an increase of 4% when compared to the previous year. 515 mills are crushing versus 507 mills uh, at the same point last year. And Uttar Pradesh has produced more sugar, 1% more sugar, at 4.07 oh, 4 million tons at this particular point in time, which is in line with our, with our projections. According to our estimates, Triveni estimates, we are anticipating net sugar production in sugar season 22-23 of 35 million metric tons. And this is lower than the previously announced estimates of ours, as well as street estimates, which were approximately 36 odd million tons. We still believe that this is a very healthy amount of production, and with 6 million tons of exports that have been announced, there is a possibility of a second tranche of a maximum of probably about 1 million tons that can be considered by the government. And our hope is that the government does consider an additional tranche very soon of a million tons of sugar, as the window to truly export sugar from India um, will end with the sugar season. Uh, and that is approximately the point in time when Brazilian sugar, et cetera, will also be in global markets. Uh, turning to the international markets based on reports, the forecast uh, is that sugar season 22-23 is a surplus of 3 million tons of sugar. And this is primarily due to a substantially larger crop in center south Brazil, as well as an increase in Thailand. Um, the global sugar prices have also softened uh, very recently, but you know they, these are. Uh, it has been uh, um, fluctuating um, for quite some time, and and very substantial uh, and improved pricing in global markets. So today, uh, uh, after touching highs of over 21 cents, 21.18 cents in December 22, New York uh, number 11 futures are now trading at about 19.8. Um, Per pound. Uh, London White, the number five contract, was trading at $551 per ton, but down from the recent highs of about $580 per ton in December 22. Um, so we're, we're sort of hovering around recent highs, which is which is quite encouraging, and which leads me to the point that if we were, if India were to export another million tons of sugar. The timing is very appropriate right now. The world market will certainly absorb that sugar, and Indian mills will receive remunerative pricing. Uh, turning towards our alcohol business, we've had an 87% increase in production for the quarter under review. Uh, the same quarter has had an increase in average realization of 2.5 rupees, which stood at 56.6 rupees per liter. Additional capacities have been commissioned in the nine months, which has aggregated, and which has resulted in the increased sales volume, uh, and the aggregate distillation capacity now stands at 660 kiloliters per day. The profitability margins have been somewhat impacted by an increased transfer price of B heavy molasses, uh, and as you will note, we we uh, uh, adjust the transfer price to be more relevant with the market prices from time to time. The sale of ethanol produced from grain accounted for 33% and 20% of total sales volume in the current quarter and nine month period correspondingly. The ethanol produced from bee heavy molasses constitutes 57% and 72% of sales volume in the current quarter and nine month period against 88% and 80% in the corresponding periods of the previous fiscal year of the previous year. Uh, from a domestic industry perspective, of the 470.5 crore liters that's been finalized by OMCs, 
against a total requirement of 600 crore litres contracts for just under 460 crore litres have been executed to January uh, 1st, 2023. Against the above, 38 crore litres have been lifted by OMCs by January 1st. The average blending is 10.43%. Uh, the target, of course, as we all know for the nation uh, for this year is 12% is, is blending. The total contracted quantity from sugarcane juice and bee-heavy molasses is 133 crore, crore litres and 204 crore litres, respectively, till January 1st, 2023. 5.8 crore litres is the contracted quantity towards sea heavy molasses, 18.7 crore litres from damaged fruit grains, and 97 crore litres from surplus rice. Therefore, the sugarcane based feedstock continues to be the dominant contributor towards the ethanol blending program. And my view on this is, is fairly clear that as we go forward and and, and, and uh, approach levels of EBP20, the sugarcane sector should continue to play a disproportionately high role in terms of the government's EBP program. And we definitely need that to be accounted for in government policy. Um, and I'm alluding directly towards the pricing of ethanol that is made from juice, because I think it is the most reliable source for ethanol and for the EBP program uh, as we as we uh, move towards the 1,000 crore mark and, and beyond. Turning quickly to the engineering businesses, I'd like to start with our power transmission business, which has seen revenue increases in the quarter of 71% to 60.5 crores, and a PBIT improvement of 91.5% to 20, a shade about 21 crores. The closing order book is 23% higher at 262.75%. Sorry, 262.75 crores. For the nine month, the order book grew at 10% um, for the same period. And uh, uh, I will, of course, be happy to discuss the changes and the capexes of the power transmission business during the um, remainder of this call. Turning quickly to the water business, there's been a 34.4% improvement in revenues in the quarter to 104 approximate crores and the closing order book is a shade above 1,500 crores, broadly in line with what it was in the previous corresponding period. And the above results are based on the consolidated um, perspective, including our wholly owned SPVs. The orders that have been achieved in the water business for the nine-month period stands at just above 190 crores, excluding OEM, O&M orders. The company is expecting robust order booking in the coming quarters, and we're anticipating several important uh, orders to be uh, concluded within Q4 of this fiscal year. Uh, I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about the outlook of the various businesses. Uh, as far as the sugar business is concerned, as a result of the debottlenecking and modernization, carried out start three factories are crushed is expected to be significantly higher this year. We are still maintaining, as we did uh, on the call, uh, on, on our last call, before the sugar season, or just about when the sugar season had, had started, that we will have a higher crush of between 9 and 10% this year. Of course, with the CAPEXs that have been planned, we, we propose that we will uh, uh, have a, a higher crush in the next season, uh, an even higher crush compared to this year as well. At the current ongoing season, there is a declining trend of recoveries across the state of Uttar Pradesh for the Ratoon crop, and this is due mainly to the rains uh, during the grand growth periods and thereafter in, in, in late October. However, we've had fantastic conducive weather, and it is expected that there will be a catch-up for the balanced part of the season with the plant crop coming to the factories. Our test data from our labs indicates very positive results for the plant crop, which we anticipate coming to our plant over the next, uh, when the start will happen in the next week or 10 days, up to two weeks, depending on, on, on each plant. Considering the crush and recovery expectations, we expect higher production for the year. And with 60% of our total sugar being refined sugar and the doubling of the pharmaceutical grade production uh, plant, 
This will all boost realizations and profitability in the coming quarters. The plant at Deoband, which was converted into a refinery, is operating uh, brilliantly, and the sales of that refined sugar will be reflected in Q4 and beyond. A very small quantum was reflected in Q3. On the policy front, we believe this is the most appropriate time for the government before the budget to consider during the budget uh, an, an increase in the MSP of sugar uh, to offset the impact of, of costs and cane prices, etc. As I mentioned, the board has also approved a 90 crore capex to further modernize and de bottleneck the plants and for efficiency improvement across the various facilities. Uh, the, I would like to also mention that the recoveries uh, for this year and last year are not directly comparable because last year our largest factory at Katoli ran on sea heavy molasses and therefore a higher recovery versus this year the factory has run, in fact six out of the seven plants have run on bee heavy molasses. The quantums are different as I mentioned earlier. Turning to the outlook of our alcohol business, we have a capacity of 660 KLPD and a planned increase up to 1110 KLPD with two more distilleries, both of the new ones being dual feed. We believe that that is the modus operandi for sugar mills that, that should be adopted, giving you ultimate flexibility in terms of looking at, at, uh, at the bottom line um, and the availability of different feedstocks for the, for the distilleries. We're encouraged by the recent increase in ethanol prices. However, there is an urgent need for the government to improve the pricing of ethanol produced from juice. Uh, it is our understanding that the government is considering this, as well as an improvement in ethanol prices from grains. Uh, as far as Treveni is concerned, we have 260 KLPD of ours that can operate on grain of the, of the 660 KLPD, and so therefore we do have a great deal of flexibility of being able to take advantage of the relative increases in prices as and when they happen. Looking at the power transmission business, uh, the outlook for the domestic product segment within high-speed gears is extremely promising as industrial capex in sectors like cement, energy, distillery, steel are growing um, and have been supported by policies and, 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 and robust economic growth. And uh, uh, we're very encouraged by the increase in demand from these sectors. I would like to mention that following the expiration of the high-speed license agreement with Lufkin Gears LLC, which happened just a few weeks ago in January 2023, the, the company will pursue the high-speed, high-power segment independently, and it is confident, and I am confident, of enhancing our market share in identified target markets, which includes global markets. In the aftermarket business, the company is focused on expanding its addressable market and market share, looking both at domestic and identified target markets. The government make an India initiative has led to new opportunities for diverse engineering products and the power transmission business is actively participating in many of these indigenous projects. In the defense segment, the business expects strong orders and areas such as, in areas such as propulsion shafting and many others. Uh, we believe that there is long-term growth in this segment combined with the machining infrastructure that is likely to show growth over the coming years. Furthermore, the LM2500 package indigenization, the agreement that we have with uh, GEAE, is expected to grow and to result in, in um, um, positive and good revenues for this particular segment. With a capex of 100 crores, which is split uh, sort of two thirds, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, in 66% uh, for, for gears and 33% and for the defense business, that will allow the business to really meet the accelerated order booking that is anticipated over the next few quarters. Very quickly, for the order, uh, for the water business outlook, the company is expecting a fantastic order booking, hopefully in the next, in this quarter and in the next quarter, with many projects coming under conclusion. We are expanding our activities in overseas markets, as I mentioned earlier, and that too, and there, there are certain tenders in international markets which will also be concluded during the first half of this calendar year. And there are many attractive states such as Karnataka, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Delhi, Telangana, and Maharashtra where the company is working aggressively 
on securing projects. The overall output for EPC and HAM projects, uh, which is driven by large investments for the government, both at the state and central level, is extremely positive, and we hope for some positive news on that front as well. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. With that, I'd like to conclude my opening remarks and open up the floor for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Manial from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just a few questions I have. Uh, one is if you can give a range uh, for the gross recovery decline uh, till December and till date, and what is, your, what is your expectation for the full season? So uh, the gross recovery decline till 31st December was about 0.39 units. As we stand today, uh, we are around 0 0.34, 0 0.35 units down. And we believe that we'll be very close uh, to last year's figures. May not touch it, but it's generally uh, at a touching distance. So, so you, you are expecting there would not be, a, on a full season basis, there should not be much decline? Uh, uh, you know. so there will be a decline, but not significant. Sure, sure. Uh, just on the accounting purpose, so you have also, so... Also, also, let me just add to it, and this is predicated on the plant gain performance which is yet to come, which will come in February. It may even turn out to be better than what we are seeing at our labs right now. Sure. Sure, sir. Uh, just one more thing on the, on the accounting purpose. Uh, where have you accounted for this 29 crore uh, profit uh, book from the quota sale? It is appearing as a part of the revenue. This is not the part of other income? No, it's not a part of the other income. Uh, and just one last thing on the on the alcohol uh, side, uh, I think uh, you are still selling some 10% around ethanol from C heavy. Uh, given the fact that it is uh, not that remunerative, why uh, you are still selling a C heavy? Uh, we, are, we, are, we are not uh, selling from 10% uh, uh, of ethanol uh, uh, to from C heavy. It is largely ENA, which is for our in-house consumption for IMIL business, as well as a little bit of grain ENA. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, and just lastly, if you can just elaborate on the on the engineering business from a two to three year perspective, what is your vision for this business, uh, given the fact that you are taking a, a substantial uh, capex, uh, uh, what do you think, how, how the, how the uh, revenues for the gears, uh, as well as the defense business can pan out in the next two to three years? Thing? So, uh, you, you've, you've seen the growth in order booking across the power transmission business, uh, and I've always given this as a combined number, which includes gears and defense. And uh, we're anticipating that on the defense side, certainly there are a lot of projects that are nearing conclusion. The growth has been very good this year. It will fructify into revenues. And therefore, that business requires an independent facility for, uh, for the manufacture of all of these varied products. Uh, that's part of the CapEx. The other portion of the CapEx uh, that has been announced is for a brand new facility uh, at the same complex in Mysore because we will be touching um, full capacities at some point uh, during the course of the next fiscal year. And so we need to set up a brand new facility because we're seeing this business growing. We're seeing, we're anticipating larger quantums of business both from OEM and aftermarket sales, and therefore there is a requirement for newer capacity addition. Now, in terms of uh, a two to three year perspective, I think the growth that is anticipated uh, across uh, both these businesses of, of power transmission is, is extremely robust. Uh, we're, we're looking at not just the domestic market contributing towards it, but also select international markets uh, and the signs of that are already flowing in in terms of enhancement of order booking from key customers. So, I, you know, I typically don't give you numbers in terms of what our anticipation is, but, you know, we've been growing uh, at good, good rates. I expect those excellent double-digit rates of growth to continue. Uh, 
Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much for for all the answers. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Agarwal from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Firstly, uh, what is our uh, you know distillery capacity at the moment in terms of liters? Uh, you know, annually, how many liters can we do? And going forward, uh, what are our plans? You know, uh, to enhance this capacity further. And so, what amount of liters would that get us to also? Sorry. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So we have enhanced our capacities very recently. There's been one distillery that was commissioned in April of 2022. Uh, a second distillery that was commissioned in July of 2020, oh, June July of 22, taking our total capacity up to 660 kiloliters per day across the four distilleries. This year, as we have projected, we would be producing about 18 kiloliters of alcohol. On a, st- uh, on a steady state, the 660 kil BD, which will be next year, fiscal 24, will produce. Just a shade about 21 crore liters of alcohol. The board has also announced a further addition of two distilleries of 225 kLPD each, which will be uh, commissioned in Q4 of the next fiscal year. Those distilleries, when they are running at full capacity, will take our total production above 31 crore liters. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, that's helpful. Uh, secondly, uh, you know this question again on uh, sugar prices. So you mentioned uh, that you know you expect sugar prices domestically to move up, uh, uh, you know, uh, as as the season progresses. Uh, on that count, you know, what is the probability of a further cut in production numbers from 35 million ton? You know, because I think we started at 36 half, 37. Now we're down to 35. So is there any further pro- probability that you know the domestic production could be lower? First, uh, first question is that, and second question obviously is, suppose if the uh, government does not allow exports, uh, further exports beyond six million ton, would that uh, pressurize prices or you know uh, uh, subdue the momentum in, in terms of prices in any way? Yeah. So I think the the uh, my my interpretation of this is that the markets uh, at this particular point in time ha- have taken a view. that the government will have no further exports and therefore if there are exports that happen it will certainly boost domestic sugar prices number one that is that's an important point to consider so i don't see any downside from a uh, from um, uh, from a perspective of if the government does not announce another million tons of exports it will have a dampening effect in fact it's quite the opposite i think it's already been factored in if there is exports it will it will boost domestic prices number one number two Further downside revision. Uh, one one hope one one's hope is, of course, anything can happen because the, the, we are dealing with agricultural products. And last year, the most significant impact on the plant crop was unseasonally high temperatures in the month of March. Now today, as we stand at the end of January, we're still, you know, uh, 35 40 days away from March. So uh, meteorological data suggests, which is far more accurate, suggests. that we will have normal temperatures as we go through the rest of the season now in case that is uh, that remains so i believe that there will not be any great vacillation from the numbers that we project from the country our survey estimates of 35 million tons of production after uh, diversion towards ethanol um however um there is any possibility i don't think there is a great possibility of the production The net number being higher than 35 million tons, frankly speaking. Okay, got it. Uh, also, I wanted to know what is the diversion to ethanol that we've considered in the current uh, sugar season, and what could possibly the, be the diversion in the next season? You know, once more capacities come about in the country. So uh, the diversion this year is uh, taken. We've taken it at four and a half million tons. There is a little bit of work that is required to touch four and a half million tons. and my hope is that with the subsequent tenders and the government being so proactive in terms of uh facilitating this uh 12% blending for this year that we will um see more diversion of sugar as the season concludes by by march and uh, sorry by may by the end of may that's number 1 uh, as far as next year is concerned i think it it is uh it it really depends 
uh, on the, the capacity addition that takes place. Now, the capacities, frankly speaking, new capacity addition from sugar factories to process juice has waned. So okay. the sugar industry investing large into large distilleries, that is not projected to increase by any dramatic amount between now and the next year. Uh, and as a result, I don't see that increasing. Although I do believe that we need higher prices of ethanol based on, on cane juice, and, there, and we will very quickly see more investments happening. So there are a few isolated distilleries. Traveni has two coming up. There are a few other groups that have a few coming up, but nothing, uh, nothing substantial. Um, but I do believe the government is looking at this, and my hope is that that policy will change, and it will allow uh, the sugar industry to divert more juice uh, taking it up to at least 6 million tons of diversion and beyond uh, over the coming years. My personal view is that the sugar industry should be able to divert all of 8 million tons of sugar towards the ethanol bending program. Uh, and that should be a more sustainable model over the medium to long term basis. Good, good. Also, last question from my end. Uh, what uh, approvals are required for the buyback to go through? Uh, it is, you know, we, we, we major thing was the shareholders' approval, which we have already received, and uh, we have given all the draft uh, advertisements, etc. And the letter of draft letter of offer has been filed with the SEBI, and we are awaiting the final observation, which is expected okay. soon. Okay. It's an open market route, or is it, is it a tender with the buyback? No, it's, it's a tender on a proposal. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much for answering all my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. So uh, I want to know what is our ethanol mix uh, target this year and uh, going forward? So this year, uh, we have already done the numbers which are already with you uh, in terms of uh, 90% uh, coming in from B-heavy, 90% uh, being the total ethanol and 10% being ENA. Of that, 57% is from B-heavy and 33% is from grains. This is for the Q3 numbers. Now, for the total uh, alcohol, which we will be uh, dispatching in FY23, I think the number will be from B-heavy will be about 74 to 75% and grain will be about 25 to 26%. Okay. Okay, so uh, our endeavor would be more towards uh, producing B heavy till, till the max we can, right? Absolutely, being, correct. And I, uh, would, I, would, I would also, uh, you know, as I mentioned in my concluding remarks, uh, uh, the crush increase that is happening of 9 to 10% this year gives substantially improved feedstock for the distilleries. And the fact that we are now we're looking at more optimization next year means that we will have more feedstock, more be heavy molasses that will be available um, for the distilleries for the following year as well. Okay. Okay. And uh, if this uh, recovery scenario, which uh, caused due to the late rain, uh, I, I was under the impression like why haven't uh, the price moved in UP then? Uh, if uh, if the whole UP had a lower recovery, and uh, how chances are good that for a new uh, additional export quota will come? So I think I just just answered part of that question uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, the 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 movement in in sugar prices, or rather the stagnation in movement of sugar prices, is a bit of an anomaly, frankly speaking. There is no reason, given the uh, balance sheet position as of even today. Uh, that the sugar prices should be at the levels that they are. Uh, my view is that the market is assimilating what the production numbers will be. We are happy to give out of any estimates in terms of production today, uh, that the association meetings are happening early next week, where there will be more announcements of the, the production for the nation as a whole. And I think all of that, once it gets absorbed, will reflect into some positive movement in, uh, in sugar prices. Uh, but uh, but sir, uh, according to you, uh, how much another like do we need another three million tons of export to keep the uh, stock as well as the prices steady for the millers to have at least a uh, you know, decent margins on this? 
No, no, absolutely not. If I run through the, the quick balance sheet numbers, if you have just under 26 million tons of consumption in the country, so mm -hmm. let's say 27.5 to 27.7 million tons, and you have 35 million tons of production with 6 million tons of exports. With another million tons of exports, you've pretty much uh, maintained the opening balance uh, and, and as, as the closing balance for sugar season 22-23. So there's not that much export that is required. And I think the government is judicious in this, in this perspective and is watching what the total production numbers are. My hope, of course, is that with these estimates coming out, the government will quickly announce a million tons of exports. However, my personal view is that the market, the trade, has factored in no more exports. And so, therefore, I do not see any downside to sugar prices. Frankly speaking, I only see uh, uh, some upside. Okay. Uh, some upside uh, will obviously cause when the, there is a demand supply, again, uh, more of a demand and less of a supply it comes. Uh, otherwise, it stays uh, more or less at this level, the prices. No, that's not what I said. Uh, okay, uh, I, I, because if there is no export, there uh, there would be no uh, again no uh, pressure on the supply. So uh, the uh, prices could be at uh, at a, this level basically. Uh, frankly speaking, the the uh, see prices of course move from time to time. There is a quota that is announced by the central government on a month to month basis. It has an impact on pricing. The variables that actually result in market price are fairly substantial. It is not simply a demand and supply equation. Because it's a controlled commodity, there are various elements. So it is, uh, I, I wouldn't agree with you that the prices will remain stable at this level. I think there is huge opportunity and other mechanisms to allow for price enhancements to happen. Uh, the, the majority of those rest with the central government and DFPD. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, so even though we have a uh, had a good uh, export realization, uh, what is our cost of production? Because I'm trying to uh, gauge like uh, what caused the uh, margin to decline like this. You know, if we are able to get almost the same recovery as last year, I think the cost of production would also remain at the same level. Uh, the cost of production as of 31st December is not very relevant. Because, you know, as of now, the recoveries are a little less, and going forward in the season, recoveries would further improve. So, therefore, you would get the benefit as the recoveries improve. Okay. Okay. So, uh, still 31st uh, December, since the inventory is now valued at 34.4, uh, can we take it uh, similar to this level, uh, 34.4? No, that's not what we said. We said that with the rest of the season, the recoveries will improve, the cost of productions will come down, and if we achieve the same recoveries as last year, but and with higher crushes, despite some some small increases in 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 in, uh, uh, in, in other costs, in input costs, etc., we will still maintain the average cost of production as last year. Just to give you an example, uh, 31st March 2020-22, our cost of production was 32.7. Okay. So, so with the recoveries converging now, I think one should move towards that figure. Okay, I got it. I got it. Thank you so much. I'll get John back in a few. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations sir, on the good set of execution. Sir, my couple of questions were on the PTB division. Uh, what would be the capital employed as on third quarter in this division? Uh, just one second. No, it will be here. Yeah, it will be here. Just one minute. One forty one crores. One forty one crores. 141 crore. Okay, sir. And uh, if my understanding is right, we are spending uh, roughly around 180 crores more in this division, considering our early announcement and the announcement in this quarter. So uh, broadly, uh, given the asset turn what we have, which is uh, say in the range of 1.5, uh, 
uh, we are expecting very good growth in this division. Is that uh, understanding right, sir? That understanding is correct. Uh, I would also urge you to consider that the capex that is being incurred, the total amount that you have mentioned, is is pretty much split two is to one. So 66% of it is for growth of the traditional gears business, and the balance is for the new facility that is being set up for defense production. That the latter is required as a discrete independent facility for all the defense products that the that orders that we have won as a company, and we will continue to win as uh, over the next few quarters. And we anticipate excellent growth on that front. As far as the traditional gears business is concerned, with a uh, a, a focus. Um, of expansion in certain areas, especially uh, a, a, a dual-pronged strategy of OEM growth and service and aftermarket revenue growth, we do need further capacity additions. And the growth rates that you have assumed are very much in line with what we expect and what we are already seeing in terms of enhanced order booking levels. Okay. Uh, so to just, to just summarize what you said, so out of this 180 crores, 120 crores is going towards capacity expansion and one third is a little bit longer gestation period or uh, expected, right? So that is understanding, right? Is that right? Around 120, the gears business? Absolutely, that is correct. Okay, sir. And uh, what would be the key monitorables apart from the private capex what you highlighted for this division? Because I'm not that I was with the division as such. So private capex would be one monitorable. Apart from that, uh, other monitorables for the division? Shalish, your line is a bit unclear. Could you just go softer and just, um, uh, slower as well? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I just repeat it out. Uh, I just wanted to know monitorables for the division, apart from the private capex, what Charan mentioned in the opening remarks. Uh, I'm sorry, what, what exactly do you mean by monitorables? See, what I'm trying to understand is that, uh, see, basically, uh, I'm expecting around good 30-35% jump in this business. So just wanted to know where the order inflows are expected to come from, apart from private capex, any other, any other monitorables for us to look out for in the next couple of years in this division? There's defense. There's private capex, there's public capex, and there's defense. There are three. Uh, and I'm not going to comment on the growth rates that, you, that, you're, uh, that you're expecting, uh, but I, what I will say is that we're expecting very reasonable uh, growth across uh, both the traditional gear segment and the defense segment. The, uh, um, the, the boost in terms of order booking, the, the very large quantums, of course, will come from the defense side but that will have a longer gestation period. That will be over a larger number of years. On the traditional gear side, it is, um, it is uh, expected with shorter duration, as is always, that is the nature of the business. I do want to mention that the growth will not be at a consequence of profitability. We've, we're very proud of the margins that the business has maintained over the last 15, 20 quarters of uh, over uh, approximately 35% EBITDA margins and over 30% EBITDA margins. Broadly, brush strokes I'm giving you for the last uh, number of quarters. And the growth will certainly not be at a consequence of that. So we're looking at profitable growth as it happens. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. That was very useful. So coming to the power water division, uh, there has been some uh, margin pressure uh, Till nine months. Uh, any views on that? Any particular reason for that? We are facing margin pressures on water division. I, you know, I, mean, I mentioned this in my opening remarks. I think we would. I would encourage you not to look at nine month numbers and to wait for the next quarter and look at the annual numbers, because a lot of this is based on execution and recognition of revenues, etc. And that is lumpy. The business is lumpy. The recognition is lumpy. And so, uh, point in time to look at the the margins is uh, will not do justice to that business and is unfair to that business. I do believe that it is a challenging business, but we have got excellent margins, especially when we compare ourselves to our peers in the group, certainly at, in, the, in the top echelon. And I believe that, that the, and this business is growing profitably and growing well, and you will see that reflection when you review our full year results. Sorry, uh, sir, uh, one more news. Yeah, sorry to interrupt yeah. you, sir. We were requested, please come back in the queue. 
Participants, we request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Lokesh Maru from Nippon India Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, sir, I wanted, just wanted a hint on what the CO take on that price hike for uh, maybe this season Sorry, and next you season. Yes, uh, Lokesh, your voice is not very clear. Please speak with the, through the hands. Hello. Am I audible now? Yes, you are much better. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> Just wanted a sense on uh, what you're expecting on or what you're hearing on cap price hikes. Uh, expectations front, basically given that this year is the pre-election one. So from the current sugar season and the next one, if uh, you know, you can provide any clue on that. So, uh, Lokesh, this is not the pre-election year. In fact, next year is the pre-election year. Uh, and we are halfway through the course of this year. Uh, there have been press articles. Your news is as fresh as mine, but my perspective is that there is really no reason for any increase to happen this year, even if, if it is from a, a political perspective. From an economic perspective, I don't think there is any reason. The real improvement to farm incomes has happened as a consequence of yield, and farm incomes has done very, very well. I think it is very clear to me that if there were any increase in SAP this year, it will lead to substantial cane arrears. And that is something that the government definitely wants to avoid. Uh, it has done extremely well thus far to ensure that cane price payments uh, have been better than ever before, frankly speaking. And so even at this particular point in time, I don't think that position is something that the government wants to tinker with. Uh, my view would be that there will be no increase in SAP this year. And I would certainly argue uh, and then put forward our perspectives to the government for next year to see where sugar prices are um, and, 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 and give our views in terms of um, what the pricing should be for the following year. Understood. You got that, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Jain from Galaxy International. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Um, there was two questions. Sir, your voice is not very clear. If you can speak to the handset. Yeah, just uh, two questions. Uh, of, uh, on, uh, on the water, uh, water business side, <coughs> what do we anticipate as our sustainable EBITDA margin? Right? On a long-term basis, what is it that we can actually achieve? And second is that uh, the business, the engineering business and the water business, uh, so they are, let's say, distinctly different from the sugar business. So do management have any thoughts or any plans to demerge that at some point of time? Let's say it's now a 500 odd crore business plus, right? So, yeah. So, um, you have a, uh, you've asked a very pertinent question. Let me answer the first one. on. A long-term sustainable basis, we're certainly looking at EBITDA margins north of 10%. So double-digit uh, PBIT margins is what is the expectation of this, of, of this business. Of course, uh, there is lumpiness, order value changes, it's execution changes, et cetera, et cetera. But over a long-term basis, that is the expectation at a sustainable level and a much larger level of revenues from where we are today, uh, point one. The second point is in terms of the, the disparate nature of businesses that you've commented on, the, the board at this point in time has not evaluated uh, any form of demerger, et cetera, et cetera. As and when it does, we will inform the stock exchanges. I'm happy to come back to you to discuss it further. But at this particular point in time, uh, the businesses are all under the umbrella of Triveni Engineering. Sure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. I had a couple of questions, one specific to the company and one at a macro level. So again, on the sugar number, uh, ISMA started off with a figure of 40.5 million tons uh, as on December. And now we are hearing figures like 38 and a half, 39, wherever it will go. And it seems that this production loss is going to be uh, coming from Maharashtra, Karnataka mostly. Is that a correct assumption? Because most of the UP mills are thinking the recoveries will be uh, higher in the uh, fourth quarter and production will be slightly higher than last year. Is that a correct assumption? So uh, broad, broadly speaking, I think uh, the, 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 the most significant 
lower production numbers are certainly coming from Maharashtra. Um, one or two mills have, I've, I'm hearing one or two mills have already uh, shut down um, and, and more and more will, will start. So the reduction is coming there. Now as far as the ISMA estimates are concerned, I think earlier they were broadly, our own Triveni estimates were, were very much in line where we had four and a half million tons of diversion coming to about 36 million tons of sugar production. We've now reduced that number to 35 million tons as we believe that the numbers coming from Maharashtra and a little bit from Karnataka will be lower uh, to the majority of this. Uttar Pradesh should be broadly in line with uh, with what is last year, some higher, some companies higher, some companies lower. So effectively same as last year? Correct. Your second okay. question? Yeah, my second question was uh, uh, a larger question on the E20. If you could give me some color on the way the supply side is gearing up because we are hearing by April 23 there will be E20 in the pumps. So how is it going to be like, is it going to be uh, like a separate dispenser like we see abroad or is it going to be like pumps changing over to E20 because the latter is not possible given that the old cars are not actually likely to run on E20. So some color on the supply side because I know how the auto, auto companies are gearing up but on the supply side, how will the pumps uh, gear up to uh, sell E20? So, uh, well, actually I'll answer both, even though you've asked me only on the, on the supply side. On the supply side, frankly speaking, um, from the announcements, the press announcements from MOPNG, it is going to be on a pilot basis in certain cities across the country. And I think that is going to basically look at certain distribution points, certain petrol pumps that have the facility to bifurcate E20 from E10 and offer, offer that optionality to customers. We don't know as yet what the pricing of E20 will be, very frankly speaking. So will it be at the same price or will it be at a potential discount is still something that is, that is to be discovered. Um, that's point one. The second point that I would like to make is that most four-wheelers, from a metallurgical perspective, have engines that can, that can meet higher levels of ethanol blending. So they don't really have any performance related issues. It is the two wheelers that have the, the bulk of the problems of historic vehicles. But going forward from 1st of April, there is no problem for any new vehicle in the country. And so this announcement strategically matches with the automobile manufacturers having uh, E20 vehicles being sold uh, to, the, uh, to the public. Uh, I do believe that uh, uh, from a pilot perspective, it's the best way to go because frankly speaking, otherwise creeping up from E10 to E11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 20 is not a viable scenario. This is an ideal scenario and it is, uh, um, um, frankly speaking, a visionary move in terms of adoption of E20 uh, across the country. So uh, even the old four-wheelers are... Uh, Jeff, uh, no. I would request you to please yeah. come back in the queue. Just to follow up with an earlier question. Okay. So just, uh, yeah, so, just, uh, so, so as I understand, the old four-wheelers can also handle the E20 as per what we just discussed, as per the, uh, the engineering of the old four-wheelers are concerned. So I, I can't comment on all four-wheelers, all, all four but only from a metallurgical perspective, uh, there are, there may be some rubber part issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but broadly speaking, uh, the answer would be towards yes. Everything is shades of grey here. So can I can I just supplement it? What you will have is finally two dispensers coming in. One will be E10, which will be the base or the protector, which may move up to E11, E12, and the other one will be an E20 dispenser. So that would be the, the, the what the pilot is going to undertake right now. And that's how you are going to get blending. Uh, but four wheelers, to answer your second question, uh, by and large, should not face any problems. Thank you. We'll move to the next question from the line of Nitin Avasti from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, so, I would like to know what was the green ENA prices uh, which you realized uh, last quarter? Grain ENA prices, which we realized last quarter, were about 54 rupees plus 18 percent GST. Uh, grain ENA, I was referring to not grain uh, ethanol. There would be a difference, right? Because grain ENA would be selling in the market. So that's why I said 54 rupees plus 18 percent GST. 
So this matches okay. in with the ethanol prices of 58.50 plus 5 percent GST. If you look at those parity numbers, you will come closer to those numbers. Okay, understood, sir. So the second question was, um, if like you mentioned, you are looking for the government to increase the ethanol prices. If the government were not to increase the ethanol prices, would it under the investment plans going ahead in the ethanol segment? Uh, I think the speed at which new capex would come up would certainly be impacted, because you are seeing material price increases. Uh, uh, you are seeing uh, input cost increases that are happening. Uh, for example, for the grain-based plants, you are seeing that the the cost of fuel has increased quite substantially. You're also seeing metal price increases and, and some delay. So, you know, there will certainly be an impact. It will delay uh, the amount of capex coming into this industry. Um, however, is it uh, a total negative? Not, not a complete negative. There is still a difference between grain and, and uh, molasses or juice-based uh, uh, plants. Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajiv Agarwal from Sterling Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the opportunity. I just want to understand in the, this distillery division, you have uh, recorded very good growth in IML sales, Indian made Indian liquor sales. So uh, uh, which areas do you market this product and can you share the quantum of sales for the quarter and for the nine months in, in terms of liters? <clears throat> Uh, well, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, the number of cases, I'll just give it to you. Uh, we number are selling it. Cases. Yeah. Number so number of cases. cases. I'll, I'll just give it to you. I'll just give it to you. Uh, mm -hmm. What we are doing right now is that we are selling it in UP, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, our focus is on two areas. One is which are the areas which are close to us where we save on the freight costs going ahead. And B uh, uh, is also a little distant away to some good cities within UP wherein our brand gets built up. And uh, the numbers uh, we have in terms of cases is about 9.31 lakh cases in this quarter and 21.84 lakh cases uh, in the nine months. So I wanted this in liters. Can you share it in liters? So. Hello. Hello. Multiply by nine, Hello. please, and you'll get the liters. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Udit Gupta, from individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, good afternoon, sir. So I wanted to understand, sir, what is the amount of grain required to produce a liter of uh, ethanol, sir, and so what is the price of the rice that we are buying right now for the grain? So there are there are two aspects to it. One is the uh, the surplus rice, which comes from FCI. Now that's uh, fixed by the government at 20 rupees, and the recovery we are getting right now is between, is uh, let's say, virtually 470 liters per metric ton of grain. The other one is what we buy from the market. That's called the, the damaged food cranes. And their pricing has been somewhere around 1925. Uh, and uh, we get about 45.5 uh, uh, plus uh, liters per, uh, or 455 liters per metric ton of, uh, of uh, the so grain. Uh, thank you, sir. So that was my question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shikhar Singh, individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, can you put some light on the cost of production uh, of the ethanol, both syrup dri drive and be heavy ethanol, and also the country liquor? Hello. Am I audible? You know, uh, number one. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, ethanol produced from bee heavy molasses, uh, we have a transfer price of 1,000 rupees, and uh, the recoveries are approximately about 29.5 to 30. So you can come to the material cost, and over and above that, you can take approximately 10 to 11 rupees 
uh, considering variable cost as well as the fixed expenses. So that will be your total cost of production. And similarly, in the case of green, I think we have already given you the figures of recovery, etc. We have already given you the procurement size. So you can arrive at what is the material cost per liter of eth ethanol. And thereafter, uh, approximately the same amount, 11 to 12 rupees, you can add uh, towards the variable cost and fixed expenses. Okay. And regarding the country liquor? Uh, no, I think we don't declare our prices uh, for conversion of country liquor. Uh, can you please so, pardon? In terms of grain, it's an important thing that we also get a co-product out of it, and uh, which is DDGS, which is about 36% of it, and uh, of the alcohol produced, and which we market at about 25, 26 rupees. So at the end of the day, my net conversion cost comes to about 4 rupees or 4 rupees 50 per se. That's for grain-based. Uh, yes, yes, yes. grain-based. Oh, okay, so thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, just one question I, I had to ask. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, sugar division, uh, what are your strategy to uh, increase uh, availability of feedstock going ahead? Uh, if you can elaborate something on that front, because uh, we are seeing good growth on that front and crushing facilities also uh, is excellent. So can you just help me with understanding on that front? Absolutely. We have a multi-pronged uh, gain development strategy that has been in place. Uh, there are short-term and medium-term targets uh, that go down to the macro, uh, the micro level, uh, to the um, over 1,000 people that actually work within the development function uh, of, of the business. Now, to give you a, a small idea of uh, the work that is being done, it is being done in, uh, right from soil mapping and understanding the constituent elements of the soil and improving the, the soil balance so that you can get higher productivity at the farm level to uh, the actual um, uh, planting of the crop to propose newer technologies across our area. We've had huge success and we will continue to hopefully have great success in terms of newer technologies and better planting practices, deeper and wider, just to, just to paraphrase. Uh, etc. In addition to that, the provision of um, uh, quality seed, seed treatment, quality fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides, etc. That is extremely vital. Lastly, I think the 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 uh, um, the program that we have in place with respect to technology in terms of capturing information is absolutely vital in terms of our sourcing the cane once it is grown. So it's a multi-pronged uh, um, approach. And the last point that I left out is a vast number of demonstration plots. The show and tell method is absolutely vital in terms of show, uh, in terms of encouraging farmers to adopt more modern and current practices, and that is extremely important in terms of our medium-term targets. And I've actually left out one more element, which is an association that we have with leading institutes across the country in terms of uh, getting the best advice really at the ground level to be disseminated uh, amongst our farmers. So it's a six-pronged strategy that we have in place to ensure continued availability and greater availability of sugarcane. Excellent, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. That's what, that was very useful. Thanks a lot. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for the Q3 uh, nine-month results for Triveni Engineering. It's been uh, um, a very interesting quarter. Uh, I believe a good set of numbers. There have been some challenges on the sugar production front, but the other elements of the business have all performed well. As we move into the fourth quarter this year, there is huge hope in terms of a turnaround, um, not really a turnaround, but an, a vast improvement in uh, sugar production and cost of goods as far as sugar is concerned. And uh, of course, the expectation from the engineering businesses as well as our distillery business is, uh, is, is quite robust. I look forward to talking to you um, with our full year results in May. Thank you very much, and good afternoon. Thank you very much.
on behalf of Tavini Engineering, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.